We are all looking to make our digital modelers less digital and more analog. We are looking for warmth, transparency, and immediacy in response. Some people achieve this by putting pedals in front of the modelers, like preamp pedals in an effort to warm up the sound. But that means adding extra external gear to an existing system, which can be troublesome if you're using an all-in-one unit like the Pod Go. Today, I'm going to share a trick I've recently learned. Using the Retro Reel as an always-on tone shaper that pushes your signal with analog tape warmth. The Retro Reel isn't a new effect block. In fact, it's been around since firmware 3.1 on Helix and 1.3 for the Pod Go released in 2021. Since then, many people, myself included, have applied its analog tape warmth at the end of the signal chain to maximize its tape wobbling properties and stereo, but no one really uses it at the front of the signal chain. The basic premise is that the Retro Reel is an unofficial, limited emulation of the Strymon Deco, particularly its tape saturation and modulation. You won't be able to perform the same two tape deck effects like flanging and and slap back delay on the retro reel like you would on the deco. And again, searching through YouTube, there are very little videos on using the deco in front of the pedal board, save for the few people who pit the deco against other overdrive pedals. So it's a drive, like a pushed channel on a tape. So I don't push the saturation like crazy, but it just not, adds a little color. Your you know? tone is kind of saturated and pushed out. Yeah, of the definitely. Of that. Yeah. So it's beautiful drive um, that you can get very subtle, harmonic, nice warmth. Not what people would call a transparent drive. Tape saturation effect is characterized by the addition of odd order harmonics that create a nice fattening up of the signal, some dynamic compression which helps to tame the peaks. So a few things we can expect using the retro reel in front of the signal chain. It's not going to be a transparent effect. The saturation control is going to introduce odd other harmonic distortion the harder we push it, and we'll have an added bonus of having a tape wobble modulation effect. <laughs> For those of you who don't know the difference between odd and even order harmonics, it's a very deep topic that is beyond the scope of this video, but to give the worship guitarist TLDR version, when you hear a sound like an open E string of an acoustic guitar, you're hearing the fundamental frequency that corresponds to E, but stacked on top of that is a whole series of frequencies that contribute to the overall tone that your ear identifies as an acoustic guitar. Driving a signal into distortion produces harmonics in addition to the fundamental frequency, and different hardware produces different distortion characteristics, which is computed based on odd or even number multiples of the fundamental frequency. Odd harmonics are thus 1, 3, 5, 7, and so forth, generally produced by solid state gear. In musical terms, these form thirds and result in discordant sounds. Even harmonics are 2, 4, 6, 8, and so forth, generally produced by analog tube gear. These form perfect fifths and octaves, which are less discordant and are more musically pleasant to the ear. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder, or in this case the ear, and odd harmonic distortion is grittier, more aggressive, and in your face. These are desirable traits to have in some applications, so don't knock it until you tried it. And try it we shall on the part go. Some preliminary patch design remarks. The retro reel effect is not especially DSP hungry, but once you load in a full signal path, things get limited very quickly. My advice? to go amp light, effects heavy for the greatest flexibility. 
because the end goal of creating a patch like this is to use it live for the Sunday service and you want a full complement of compression, overdrive, delay and reverb. Here are two observations using the retro reel in front of the pot goal signal chain. Number one, the tone shaping effect is more prominent when placed after the compressor. Perhaps due to a design parameter of having the retro reel as a post amps end of signal chain effect, I think the retro reel is expecting a hotter signal at the input. If you're a producer and mixing in the box, you know that some plugins sound their best when there's a healthy input signal for optimized processing. You could still put the retro reel right in front, but I think its subtlety becomes too subtle. putting it after compression is that the overdrives downstream from the retro reel now have a more pronounced lower mid-range push, which I think makes them feel livelier and more responsive. better before or after compression? Let me know in the comments. Next up, number two, different amps react very differently to the saturation. Amp reactivity downstream is a difficult thing to predict. In my tests, I found that AC style amps accept a higher output retro reel signal without distorting, so you get the audible benefits of low end to lower mid saturation. These findings are corroborated by a video that Lebeus at Guitar Emerge put out using their retro reel on the Matchstick Channel 2 amp model. It's a great video by the way, so I highly recommend checking it out, which will be linked in the description box below. Take the same setting and apply it on a signal path with a litigated amp set with fairly low gain and suddenly the amp is crunching up much earlier. achieve a higher gain sound with an amp without cranking amp gain to fizzy white noise levels. On my preset that will be available in my Pod Go Worship Essentials pack, I've dialed in a milder saturation setting on the retro wheel with the litigator amp, but if you want to gain it up for a pedal to the metal sound, simply adjust the min max values higher. And this leads us to the third observation. Number three, it can function like an overdrive gain boost. Leveraging a foot switch to toggle min max parameter values of the retro reel saturation control, we can squeeze more gain out of the overdrive pedal without a drastic jump in volume. To prevent low end mud, I'll also assign the low cut control to toggle out to 120 hertz at higher saturation. This cleans up the signal before being overdriven. Are you finding value in this video? If you are, hit the like button as it lets me know that content like this is relevant for you, encourages me to make more like this, and YouTube sends it out to more people. If you're a worship musician on the same journey and want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. <laughs>
After seeing this trick in action, what about you? How are you making your particle tone more analog in character? Are you using outboard gear or are you using an effect block? I'd love to hear your ideas and thoughts in the comment section below. For a completely different approach to warmth and character, I have a tonal exploration video which I'll link here using the air apparent as an end of signal chain tone shaper. It's a very different sound which will make your tone stand out in a crowded mix. That's for the HX Storm platform, but its principles can also be applied to the particle. I'll see you there. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'm all about worship guitar.